Yes, welcome back to another episode about AI, game development, artistic endeavors, and uh, intellectual property rights and the rest, and soci societal aspects of all of this. Uh, last episode was of the A EU AI Act, and now I'll talk a little bit about data silos and also data as a resource curse. Uh, since a resource curse, that is, for instance, a resource called uh, fossil, fossil fuels, oils and the likes. And when uh, certain countries uh, specializes heavily on one kind of resource and then often corruption comes, nepotism and a non-diversified economy comes as a result. And we have seen that a lot, and it's a, it's a part of the imperialistic structure where you have currencies and hegemonies in the world that, that governs and dictates uh, uh, the flow of natural resources, natural materials, all the way to the end product and the end consumer when it comes to a supply chain and a production chain and so forth and so on. And the latest trend is that data is also a resource curse because jurisdictions, they compete now about digital information as a resource to train uh, their different kinds of algorithms and AI models def depending on definitions. And they have data and the collection and gathering of data as uh, a competitive advantage, a comparative advantage when it comes to the uh, terms of trade between countries and jurisdictions. So then data in itself, depending on how you harvest data and how you ingest data will become a re can become a resource curse if you don't govern it and if you don't make incentives so that small businesses can compete and then so you don't get tech monopolies, which we unfortunately see a lot in the world today, the Western bloc with the G mafia. Uh, and uh, the bat in the in the China block. So you have Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent in one block that uh, collects a lot of data, and also through WeChat and the Chinese block. And uh, in uh, the Western world, you have Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, IBM, uh, and and also uh, yeah, we have we have more the the traditional. The, the big tech corporations as they were um, and also Tesla uh, could, could be through X and the likes uh, and, and that kind of corporation. The, the main important thing to understand with all of this is with centralized power, the t centralized tech power and the centralized collection of data is that Data can exist freely on the internet. That was the promise and the dream of the internet to have freely, free flow of information, free flow of data, and free flow of uh, opportunities and possibilities. The internet that we see today may be closed off. We don't know what Web 4 will be. Web 3 was another kind of way that wasn't uh, uh, what, it's, what it was all supposed to be with the oncoming metaverse and the likes. But the free flow of information, uh, companies, they want to have store and gather their own inf information and own it and respect, of course, GDPR and everything else to, to uh, do a cycle with their own algorithms where they, where they gather their consumer preferences through, for instance, Amazon or Netflix and the likes of the companies. And they have a silo where they have their own data and they use their own data to sell even more to their own customers. This creates uh, that you have separated data uh, for, for companies that own their own data. And then it's not a problem for it to use their own algorithms and AI. But it could be a problem when it comes to um, competition and research and development within a jurisdiction with the whole data, but you have to own your own data. This is a copyright and intellectual property aspects. But if we, for instance, if we're going to fine tune algorithms, China has 
could have an advantage because they have so many users through the same kind of system. But we outlaw that in, in EU, which is, which is right, with social credit score and everything else. But they can gather through WeChat the whole population and, and fine-tune algorithms. So if you're, gonna, if you're going to compete with good algorithms, you also need good data and you need a lot of data and you need high quality data. And so, so the resource curse is that if we can't manage data with collective licenses uh, through uh, copyright infringement and the likes, that we have a system where we don't take away livelihood from artists and writers and voice actors and screen actors and everything else. And, and also that we have a, a respect for the individual's data, that you own your own data and can, can be opt out from system and companies, then that can be, that, can, that is good and that is right. But that can also be a competitive disadvantage for, for the Western bloc comparison to the Chinese bloc. Uh, so we have to think long and hard about the question of nature of data, how it's gathered and what is fair use data and what is not fair use data and what is individual property, what is individual rights, human rights and what is company properties and understand if you sell data through data brokers, then the data brokership to a private company or the data brokership to our government or everything else with respecting from our EU rules like the GDPR and also now the EU AI Act, then we have to follow up with the broker brokerage of the data where the original training of an algorithm came from a data set. So with the silos here, <clears throat> it, it could hinder innovation, but it's also important so we can trace where data comes from because we... We don't want to have a situation where we have uh, like clockwork orange people in in uh, less fortunate parts of the world with inflation and, and currency disadvantage that those kind of populations are forced to to watch hideous stuff to, to uh, remove that through through a data set. So the data set is free from violence and pornography and all the likes. We uh, people that are not we that are fortunate enough to not live in a world where you have to survive in that kind of way as a family or young people, then we have to work against that because that's imperialistic and everything else. But we that are fortunate, we train data through the CAPTCHA way where we pick images when we're going to prove when we, uh, that we're not a robot when we order something or that we do a login or the rest when we, we do our digital data footprints. Um, so how to enforce and harmonize everything like this to trace data where it comes from will be very important to enforce the EU AI Act and it will be very important also to ensure human rights and work for that and it will be very important to to see is it copyright infringement or not and also intellectual property with development of new uh, algorithms, new kind of data sets and how you use those kind of data sets. Um, so this is also a geopolitical aspect. So we have a huge challenge in the Western world to, to really make sure that we, 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 we are ethical and we are respect of private property, respect of deals, contracts, transactions, and not in theft and not intellectual property and not abuse also through data sets and environmental aspects and everything else to try to compete that our big tech companies and the emerging ones that could be bought up or uh, grow on their own if we have antitrust legislation and systems in place. Our Western world, that kind of that geopolitical framework and that jurisdiction is very important to 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 safeguard and try to compete because the alternative for for AI dominance and better uh, models that will outcompete maybe the Western companies can be China or Russia and the likes, where they have big huge data sets that are not in respect and accordance with human rights, individual rights individual property and uh, and everything else so so that's why i have a picture of a data silo and uh, a resource curse because data now if we don't safeguard how data is used and gathered and transformed harvested and ingested then that can become the western world's 
full resource curse that we have imposed in our turn on the, with natural resource curse on, on other companies through for oil and for corrupt uh, post-colonial elites that works and also coups that the United States has uh, made throughout South America and the United Fruits Company and all of that. So so this the next future when it comes to this is the imperialism needs needs to needs to be we need to take responsibility and stop with the imperialistic measures and and greenwash whitewash and do any other kinds of washing all kinds of washing and really see how how we how we can have authorities that can really track data in the most profound and and best way but we have to also have data silos because private companies they for them to, to to compete and respect private property and respect innovations like that we have to also make sure that private company can have their own data so this is the framework and the challenges of ahead that will also be a part of private interest and class interest and lawsuits mechanisms in future episodes ahead so thank you very much and i hope you will see also next time thank you